welcome, welcome to everyone. Um, this is the panel one discussion. This is related to service analytics, make the, make the data work for you. Um, so we have uh, wonderful speakers here. Um, Ali, you know, we just heard, he talked about a lot, uh, you know, in the previous sessions. And we have Kent, um, who's a data scientist uh, working for Kubota. He has got a lot of information, insights to share. And then finally, we have Amit from Tawad. He's a senior director um, in analytics, and uh, he works in uh, various different projects in our product. Uh, so he's, he's going to share a lot of information you know, to us. Um, so as the title suggests, um, we get a lot of data uh, you know, in the services industry right now. How do we utilize it? And uh, what do we do with the data? How do we make some insights? What kind of outcome? Um, those are all some of the specific things, specific topics. We're going to talk about it. And we are going to hear from our speakers in terms of what their experiences are. And uh, we also have a QA and a sessions um, you know, uh, before the conclusions. So uh, I'm expecting, hopefully, you know, you guys are going to share some questions and then we'll ask those questions to our speakers. So having said that, um, I'll turn it over to Kent. Um, Kent, uh, can you tell us about um, your business and your role of Kubota and how you are moving towards, you know, the learning journey? Uh, how is it, you know, being impacting, you know, in your uh, product lines? Yeah, sure thing. Thank you, Patrick, for the intro. Um, Again, my name is Kent and I work at Kubota. I'll go ahead and break down. Um, let me go ahead and share real quick. I've got a little PowerPoint. Everyone see my screen okay? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. All right. So let me just run through what I'll cover. I'm just going to go briefly over who we are as a company and discuss what I do here and uh, the learning journey we're going through as a company and then where we, we, we hope to be heading in the near future. Um, so we are an international company. Uh, we originally originated in Japan, um, but we have headquarters here in the United States. We have them all over uh, Western Europe, Canada, Australia, and a presence in uh, South Asia. Um, here in the US, I work for Kubota Tractor Corporation and I work directly with the service warranty and QA departments. Um, here's some of the companies that we own. I'll just go through this briefly. And I'm showing you all these different parts that we service, that we have to service. So this is another company, Great Plains Ag. These are all implements that go in the back of the machinery. Some more attachments that go in the back in the front. The reason I show you this is because you know, we've got to service this, right? How are we going to service this with analytics? Uh, so this is what I do uh, at home. I, I play, I clean, eat, and party. And this is what I do at work. A lot of reporting, development, architecture, IoT integration. So here's a here's an example report, the dashboard that we created, just some analytics, uh, kind of, uh, it's, it's supposed to be near real-time analytics of, of, of cases that have been submitted and performance for uh, some of the, the dealers. This was put together with the development team here in-house. Now, another facet of what I do is I do database development. And so here's a SQLite database on the right, a SQL Server database on the left. Um, and the, we're building some of this out to integrate. So we're, we're doing identification of symptom defect remedy. Um, another thing I do is I help with, with the, the data lake, basically the landscape of, of all of our systems that we use in service warranty and QA. So I'm helping with, with identifying uh, what fields need to go where and how to map those with integrations. Um, leading to the IoT, which Ali discussed uh, really well in, in his presentation, but basically we're taking IoT data. So as you can see on the bottom right, this is a dashboard. You've got a, a cluster of machines that have these telematics devices. You can zoom in if it's just, was interactive. I can show you uh, where the locations were of those machines. You can just see what kind of uh, readouts are coming from those machines, whether they're good readouts, maybe vault codes, for example. And then here's a breakdown of, okay, let's pull those, those defect codes. If you see on the top left, there's a defect code and we associate all causal parts that could be associated with that fault code. So that's a, a system integration that we, we are working towards is saying, okay, 
fault code comes up on a machine, let's say you're a customer and you, you bought a nice brand new tractor and you've had it for about two years and all of a sudden you're getting this fault code. Well, what do you think, what do you, what's the issue? How do we resolve this issue? And that's what we're trying to get to is say, okay, the probability of it being this, this part is about 23%. And so the, then we do some further um, research and breaking down, which I'll discuss a little bit in the future. Um, so here's the basically high level integration map, right? You've got the machine, you're the customer that goes into our Telemax IoT cloud, which integrates with two other systems, one here in the US, another API integration, something somewhere in Japan, a system out there. And then when that fault code arises, we'll extract and identify the symptom defect and remedy, and then notify the dealer and Hopefully you as a customer, we would send you a message on your on your app saying, hey, you, you need to service this machine soon or you're going to have some major issues that's going to you know, just slow your production, whatever you're working on. So here's an example of some descriptive service analytics that, that we've done. Um, I've kind of blocked out some of the specifics here, but basically this is a, a simulated situation that occurred. We had a failure rise on uh, August of 2019 and then we had no way of tracking other than hours what occurred because they submitted a claim um, at 180 hours so that was about two months later so we have a failure that occurred at, in August and then a failure that occurred in October but we have no idea of, of truly identifying other than researching what we've already done in those specific scenarios. So what we did was we integrated telematics. We, we slapped on a modem, put a telematics device on that machine, and we were able to identify, oh, well, looks like we have some depth temperature issues here. Okay, so now we can better identify, okay, we did some exploratory analysis. Okay, here's, here's where the source of this, this issue is arising. So in essence, this is where we're heading. We have the telematics data that's coming in. Right, we're pulling a, we have a data processor, and I guess on the far right, you, this is what Tavon is helping us build and implement right now as we speak. It's a data cloud within our um, company's Azure uh, account. And we've got a, basically an, an ingestion method that will take these bulk codes and um, pull it from three different systems. Well, more than that, but for the sake of this, we're pulling in from multiple systems and we're creating algorithms and data models where it says, on the, I don't know if you see that little white box on the right, where it says service AI. That's where all of our basic aggregations, that's where we're pulling everything, collecting everything. And um, that's where we're, we're creating basically the logic and defining okay, what, what kind of uh, issue is, is occurring and what, how are we gonna resolve this issue? And so, what we do is we create that little message and we send that little message out through the tech alert processor. And that little package is gonna to go to the dealer. And the, uh, also you'll see on the bottom left, there's a little dashboard that, that breaks down that tech alert. I know it's really small and you can't really see anything, but basically the visual representation of what's occurring on that machine at that given point. Additionally, we would send a email notification to the dealer saying, hey, for because of this, this error code, you've got about a 40% probability that there's engine needs replacement and that the injector kit needs a 60% chance that it's an injector kit. And we'll, we'll have those, shop, those uh, parts identified and ready to be shipped it's directly to that dealer if the dealer would like, like that to happen. So how does the, what is the business impact on that? Where are we heading? So as we in, improve these processes, what are we doing? We're, we're identifying and replacing manufacturing defects. So all these integrations, all these aggregations, what, how is this gonna help us? Um, all that AI data modeling, it's the, the primary solution is, is, is bringing these disparate systems together and then finding the, the value out of, of okay, what, what, what can we do? So we have root cause analysis, um, again, that with all that, we can start to improve the fleet management. Let's say you, you own a company and you have uh, several construction sites that you are helping, uh, that you're constructing on, right? You've got several um, project managers that are overseeing each site and you've got maybe 100 machines in your fleet. 
Well, how are we going to reduce that machine downtime? You've got to be able to produce. You've got deadlines to fulfill. So we use prescriptive analytics to say, okay, here's how we're going to reduce machine uh, downtime. And one of the ways we do that is by reducing potential future machine failures. Uh, for instance, let's say you have a company in Arizona, you've got a high uh, dust particle issue in your area. So we use some inferential causal analysis and say, okay, well, since you're in a more, uh, I guess, dirty environment, you're going to have to service your machines probably 20% sooner than majority of other machines that we, we put out there. Um, I know that's a brief run through, but that's, that's who I am, where we are, and um, where we're headed. That's a great information, sir, Kent. I mean, I think, you know, you guys are using the IoT data, you know, really work for you. Right, yes, yes, definitely. It's going to be a huge asset for our company. Yep, that's really wonderful to, you know, see, you know, how it is all tied up and uh, how it is all integrated. Thank you for the information. So let's go to Ali right now. So Ali, what kind of uh, trends and use cases are you seeing on the service data? You know, uh, yeah, industries um, and, you know, the other <coughs> industry spaces. Yeah, I think, um, you know, there was a desire to kind of focus on kind of EV environment. And I think um, a, a few of the areas that I think are most interesting uh, around kind of the broader manufacturing space, but also specific to EV, is the digital nature of products and services that are going to be offered. I think in the EV space, it's obviously, you know, it's a connected vehicle, um, whether that be a com consumer vehicle or um, a vehicle that is used in a kind of enterprise uh, B2B environment. But <clears throat> what has evolved has been a need to think about what digital products and services are going to be delivered to deliver what set of outcomes. And if you go to the next slide, um, what I think is really, really interesting about um, the businesses today is historically we use technology as, you know, being a way to improve our overall business. We're beginning to see the fact that businesses are becoming digital, right? The whole business is digital as opposed to just thinking we're gonna use digital tools. So that means the interface and interaction point with customers um, has changed, right? You're not selling, you know, a widget or, you know, a, a product, a box. You're selling a set of outcomes and services, right? So I think the biggest change that has evolved um, is, you know, it, you can we personalize at scale services? So can we take data from this digital product or digital asset and deliver a set of outcomes that are personalized for the user, right? Can we look at ways in which, um, you know, we're leveraging an ecosystem of partners that allow us to scale, but at um, a very customized view, right? Um, I think uh, specifically in EV space, but broadly um, manufacturers are finding there's so many different, um, you know, modifications and features and, and aspects that a specific customer is going to want. So unless you have an ecosystem of partners around you that allow you to take data, uh, volumes of data and make, you know, integral, intricate decisions, you're going to struggle to meet that level of specifications and modifications. So I think, you know, one of the ways in which I'm seeing companies evolve and one of the trends that we're seeing, um, broadly speaking, is not thinking about technologies being able to digitize um, you know, a set of activities, but really change the business model to be a digital first experience for customers and, and, and users. Um, and that can only be seeded through technology and through data, real-time data that allows you to make decisions uh, at the point of need and service. Thank you, Ali, for the wonderful information. Um, we'll go to Amit um, just for one question, and then we'll come back to Ali and uh, Kent. So Amit, um, you're seeing diverse set of conversations across multiple industries. Where do you see learning models make difference in short term and long term? Amit, I think you're talking on mute if you're talking. Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Pichi. And uh, as Ali mentioned in his session that uh, AI and machine learning is just not limited to data scientists working in the background anymore, right? It's becoming more and more man mainstream and getting embedded into the main business processes for 
better decisioning, user experience, uh, improving data quality, and automation to save on effort and cost, right? Uh, and these are the trends that we are seeing in the industry. And I'll give you some examples. So I, I know we have an audience of manufacturing industry guys, but I'll give you some examples from uh, the other industries that we see and we work on. And we see a very uh, exponential increase in the usage of cognitive AI, right? So that is using AI for analyzing images, videos, text, speech, right? So all use cases uh, using these technologies across different industries. For example, in the fintech uh, world for the mortgage industry, we are building a solution where AI can look at property images taken by the uh, uh, assess property appraiser and analyze any potential defects in the building, roof, etc. Et right? And similarly, using natural language processing, we analyze the comments given by the appraiser to see whether there have been any property upgrades made, uh, are there any problems, any modifications to the property, and then uh, use a question answering system based on natural language to uh, get this information out of the documents and then assign a score, which can then help in automatic pro automated processing of uh, this assessment, right? So that is one example from the fintech world. In media, we see a lot of use cases where AI powered search is uh, getting used, right? It's not only about uh, getting documents and knowledge, searching across knowledge bases uh, throughout the enterprise, but also looking at images and videos and indexing them, right? So for example, I'll give you one uh, simple example. If you can, for, for a media company, now they have the ability to search uh, for a particular scene, let's say I want to search for a scene where Brad Pitt is riding a horse. I can just write that query, show me all the scenes where Brad Pitt is riding a horse and the AI enabled system can, search system can bring out all the clips where uh, that, that scene is taking place. And this is without any human intervention, human tagging uh, done on the system. In the agriculture world, we see <coughs> machine learning models being used for predicting crop yield, uh, uh, seed and labor needs re required for a particular type of crop and then machine learning models predicting that and uh, and companies using that for uh, their planning right so so these are some of the things that we see and uh, and similarly for and these are applicable for the manufacturing industry as well uh, we see a lot of use cases for natural language processing uh, in some of the things that Kent spoke about, uh, the QA code predictions, looking at free form text entered by dealers and then predicting what will be the code, uh, in factory inspections, uh, uh, right? Uh, looking at images and videos, uh, safety, uh, which is a big area. Uh, so looking at images and videos and uh, seeing if the necessary precautions and uh, guidelines are being enforced on factory shop floors and so on. So. So uh, we see a lot of uh, usage of machine learning in, uh, in forecasting predictions, fraud detection in the short term and uh, a further growth on the cognitive side, cognitive use cases in the long term using AI. Thank you, Amit. I think that was a wonderful example of, you know, the Brad Pitt with the riding horses. Cognitive AI is, uh, yes, yeah, is really evolving. And I could see that uh, manufacturing industries and service industries is getting adopted to that technology. Um, thank you for that uh, information. Um, now, coming back to um, Ali, um, so where do you see the industries evolving in the next uh, three to five years in the, in the service data decisions? Yeah, um, I think an area that maybe three areas that um, I see the industry evolving, broadly speaking, I think. First and foremost, um, you know, the need to take analytics and make real-time decision uh, uh, opportunities. I think Kent laid out, you know, how you could take failure code data and then leverage that data to, you know, predictively resolve issues um, or at least get better at service. I, mean, I think historically we've talked about a reactive proactive, predictive, prescriptive, um, you know, maturity curve. Um, I think in the next three to five years, we'll actually get closer to that as more assets, products, and machines are connected. I think one area 
that will be interesting. And this, you know, may be more kind of EV specific, but um, broadly speaking, um, across manufacturing, is the ability to take service data and deliver personalized outcomes to customers. Uh, I think, you know, historically you've you've built the same experiences, the same standard contracts same standard services for all of your customers, uh, maybe regionally specific, but for the most part, you know, it's all the same. I think the way that service analytics can play a role in the next few years is to really allow you to micro target the right set of services for a specific set of users in need and maturity. I think the last one, last piece would be, um, you know, around can you take real time service data and ensure you're able to deliver different models, different service models for customers. So some customers may want to have those standard three PM business a year. Some customers may want to have an outcome-based model set up. Some customers may want to have a risk sharing model or profit sharing model. So can you take analytics from the service experience and service operations to deliver on those uh, different types of service products to customers? I think that, you know, is, really complex, obviously, um, because you may have one customer that has multiple sites. And so do individual sites need different um, contracts? How do you measure success and value? Um, That's why it's three to five, maybe 10 years out, right? But I think analytics specific to service will help companies get closer to being able to deliver on kind of those three different um, macro trends that um, I plan to continue to cover (laughs) over the next three to five years. Thank you, Ali. I just have one request to all the participants. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to post it. Um, at the end of the session, you know, I will go through them one by one. Uh, currently, you know, I see a couple of questions on the chat already. Uh, but if you have any, any other questions, please feel free to post it. Uh, now, coming back to Kent. Um, so Kent, from your perspective, on the kind of a project, what you're currently doing, um, and where do you see uh, you know, the industry is moving in terms of services and uh, taking the decisions. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Petchy. Um, I've got a brief slide I can show. Um, but big for us, it's autonomous machinery. Right, we're, we're moving into that sphere. We've got a, this is a proof of concept model. Uh, and we also already have agri robo that's already out on the market. So with that, we're going to have a whole lot more IOT data, right? We've got so much more sensory data. First of all, it's just mapping where that uh, machine is going to traverse. Obviously, this this relates to, to agriculture. Um, as far as automating uh, construction equipment, that's a long ways off. But as far as doing a clear, defined path within a, an agricultural setting, you've got you've got satellite communication. You've got uh, you've got to determine what weather patterns, right? So if there's extra mud, extra sensory data is coming in. Here's kind of a brief simulation, but you've got lasers, you've got sonar, spatial detection. So with all these different components, we've got so much more items to service, right? You've got you've got to de- de- determine what's on each side of the machine, uh, what you know, what's in front. Is there a human? Is there a, uh, a pile of, of dirt? You know, what we've got to do is obviously concourse. So it's three-dimensional analysis, right? So we've got so much more coming down the road with the, with the volume of data, we're going to have to really figure out how to mine that with a higher frequency, right? And creating, like Ali said, real-time al- analytics that can uh, help steer steer where this machine's going to go, you know, improve the equipment and uh, also, you know, safely uh, produce in uh, agriculture, right? Farming, everything industry. Great. I think a lot of innovations are coming in, in the agriculture industry. I think we can clearly see this you know, from your visuals. Definitely, yes. Yeah. Yep, wonderful, wonderful. Um, so uh, Amit, um, again, with the broader spectrum you see, tell us about um, something about um, what is the one approach into machine learning and artificial intelligence? How are we supporting our customers and how are we evolving um, the product, CMAP as a product? Right. So uh, TMAP or uh, Tavant Manufacturing Analytics Platform is our AI analytics platform targeted towards different areas of the manufacturing industry, right from warranty analytics to IoT, 
quality and reliability service contract and a lot of other modules are available within PMAP. And one thing we firmly believe in is uh, embedding AI in the main business processes wherever uh, it possible, right? To and so we are bringing in models uh, based on machine learning that can uh, help in identifying uh, suspicious warranty claims being filed, right? So in and they they score a claim in real time, and as soon as a claim is entered, it can tell uh, whether it looks suspicious or not. And based on the score, you can automate whether it should uh, be manually uh, processed or it can be auto processed. So resulting in huge savings in terms of cost and effort, right? Uh, in, in terms of a claim processing, claim process, and as well as reducing the overall turnaround time for a warranty claim. We also have models that look at, uh, and these models keep improving over a period of time with more and more data, they keep uh, improving learning and improving. Then the early warning system that uses AI to detect anomalies in the IoT data and predict future failures uh, raise relevant alerts to people to take corrective or preventive actions. So that is again another application of uh, AI that we have in within our platform. We also have built a uh, AI powered uh, search system that can go across uh, an organization's uh, 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 claims, knowledge bases, technical cases, and provide uh, a question answering system or a semantic search system, right? And apart from these, we also have modules that use machine learning to do service part forecasting uh, and predict uh, uh, warranty reserves and so on. So our focus is totally on uh, data and analytics and how it can help and helping our customers using the power of AI uh, in their journey uh, forward. Thank you, Amit, and thank you for walking through the now overall overview about TMAP and uh, how the one is uh, evolving in the space. Um, just to you know uh, conclude. Uh, by the way, you know we are nearing the session time. Uh, we planned it for thirty minutes. Um, we just have only two three minutes. Um, just to conclude uh, the overall session, um, Kent walk us through the uh, you know what he currently does with IoT and uh, how the industry is moving towards. And of course, you know, uh, from an uh, analyst perspective, Ali, you know, walked us through the different use cases and uh, Hamid covered uh, wonderful information about cognitive search and the TMAP and everything. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your um, you know, uh, information. I just have a couple of questions on the chat. Um, after, you know, are we, you know, just one question on the chat right now, after we, you know, com come to this question, Probably, you know, we'll open it for questions to others. You know, if anybody is having any questions, um, they can just ask. Um, I think this question is to Kent. Um, you have a diverse product line. Did you rework your fault code structure with engineering as a pre-work for this prescriptive service initiative? Was it all done in data analytics? Uh, yes, Daniel, we did. We. Uh... I oversaw actually the, the build for that. We had it created a database that uh, we had a full-time employee go through really all the manuals from our end, so hundreds of pages for each manual, and then define, you know, identify the, the DTC code, the uh, diagnostic trouble code, or any type of error code associated with that, and then uh, define a symptom defect remedy for each code. So it was more of, a, I guess, a database development standpoint. And then um, we are also integrating with Japan's, uh, they have a, a JSON format that we have to integrate with uh, via APIs to uh, basically go through, you know, troubleshooting steps. You know, if you see this code, check this. If that's working, check this, and so on and so forth. So, um, so yeah, it, it was a lot of, I guess, uh, software development or, or just uh, data collection primarily. But, uh, yeah, some of that was... Uh, not as much analytics on that uh, build. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for uh, thank you for that information, Kent. It's a lot of these things require a lot better data than we're used to producing. So, you know, examples like that show that there's a lot of pre work before you even get to uh, turning some of these things on. Yeah, exactly. It takes a it is a lot of work. <laughs> Yep. Uh, 
thank you, Kent, and thank you, Daniel. Um, anybody else having any questions to our speakers, um, Ali and Amit? Okay. All right. Um, so thank you, speakers. Uh, it was a great session, and uh, thank you, participants. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk to you guys later, and hope you all have a good day.